Hello everyone and welcome to Platform Con 2023. I'm Asya Inusa and I work as a DevOps engineer at ATOS. My presentation today is going to be on automating application onboarding to app dynamics using mutating webhooks. This talk is going to be focused on Kubernetes applications and how the platforms team at InstaSwitch Group were able to combine continuous delivery concepts and observability implementation to ensure that every application on Kubernetes was monitored as soon as it was being deployed to production and UAT. We'll be going through a few concepts. So we'll go through the concept of admission controllers and mutating webhooks in Kubernetes. Then we'll go through why we chose mutating webhooks as our solution and we'll go through the initial problem that we faced in our observability project. Then we'll go through the solution we developed and the actual webhook and how it works. So in a typical flow, we have you have your Kubernetes API server, um, which receives requests for actions to be performed on a resource. So either create or delete a resource. So when you have a an admission controller or a dyna dynamics um, admission controller on your cluster, what happens is the API server sends the request to the admission controller first before creating the resource. So when it sends it to the controller and um, it either may be a validating or mutating controller, then the controller will decide what to do with your resource before it's before carrying out the action. So it's either going to be um, validated in the sense that the controller or the webhook will check if that resource is allowed to be created on the cluster, if it meets a specific standard, or it's a mutating controller or webhook in the sense that it changes your resource, maybe deleting a label or adding a label to your resource before it's created. So a simple example would be when you want to deploy production applications, you can set a validating webhook that says for every um, deployment that's coming into this environment, so into the production cluster, um, ensure that it has a label environment production. This way, if you can now set that, the what the validation is, is that it shouldn't allow um, the resource to be created on the cluster if that label is in there. So it will deny the resource from being created on the cluster. On the other hand, a mutating webhook is more, um, should I say, proactive in the sense that it doesn't just stop the resource from being created. It checks if, um, if a parameter is there and then it does something, let's say it adds the label. So it checks if the label is there, validates if the label is there, and then it adds the label if it's not there and allows the label to be, allows the resource to be created on the cluster. So here we can see that the mutating webhook receives admission requests from the API server, and then it makes the defined changes to a new or existing Kubernetes object. So you could have um, a Kubernetes object or Kubernetes resource that has been on the cluster for a long time, and then maybe you want to just recreate it. So once it's being recreated, the mutating webhook will check to see that this particular label exists on that Kubernetes resource, and then it can patch it can patch the resource with the appropriate label. So now that we understand the different types of webhooks and controllers or on um, Kubernetes, why? mutating webhooks. So the reason why we went ahead with mutating webhooks for this um, for this project was when you're onboarding an application to AppDynamics, AppDynamics is an application performance monitoring um, tool. So when you want to onboard a Kubernetes um, application to AppDynamics, you need to make some changes to the manifest. So such as adding your init container, which you download an agent from a repository, um, adding some volumes, adding some volume mounts, adding some, and adding some environment variables also. So you need to make all those changes. So in an organization where you have hundreds or thousands of applications um, deployed on a Kubernetes cluster, it won't really be an easy task. And it might be 
a bit of a burden on the developers or engineers that are working on it. So what we decided was to use the mutating webhooks to patch every deployment that was going into production or UAT with the necessary app dynamics parameters and the necessary in its container that was needed to onboard that application to app dynamics. So now let's go through the problem that we faced um, when we tried to start our project, our observability project. So the issue that we had was we had the app dynamics tool and what we just needed was we needed the developers and engineers to onboard the applications to it. And onboarding the applications meant adding um, different parameters or multiple parameters to their manifests so that when it's being deployed, the app dynamics agents um, would be downloaded and the application would be onboarded. So you'd have developers updating um, their existing manifest or if they're creating a new manifest, updating their manifest with the required app dynamics parameters. Then you have the application deployed to the Kubernetes cluster and then in its container will download the app dynamics agents and then start pushing the metrics to um, app dynamics. So in an organization where you have hundreds or thousands of applications, it might be very tedious for engineers to go through each manifest and make changes to them. So the issue that you can have is they might make or they might add the wrong, let's say, IP or the wrong application name, and that will cause the that can cause the application to start failing. So they would need to go back and make sure that everything they added was actually um, accurate, and that would just mean a lot more time um, taken to start or to get the projects going and to ensure that an application was being um, uh, was being monitored. So what we decided was that why don't we have um, the developers, let's say, add a label to their manifest. So the manifest, the label could be that, you know, install app dynamics agents or do you want the app dynamics agents to be installed? They can say yes or true. And then your webhook server would see that label once the um, admission request is created, once the API server sends the admission request to the webhook. So once the webhook server sees the label that this application needs to be onboarded or needs the app dynamics agents to be installed, then it creates a patch. So a patch is like a JSON patch um, of the parameters that need to be added. And then it sends it back to the API server. So the API server would see that patch and then add it to the manifest before creating the resource. So in that way, you have the developers just adding just create, you know, editing their existing manifest, but we just maybe one label to say I want, I want the agent, and the second label to say, and this is my application type. So let's say Java or .NET, and then you have the application deployed to Kubernetes. Um, so once the that manifest is being is um, being created on Kubernetes, then the admission review, admission request will be sent to the API server. The API server sends it to the mutating, to the webhook server, so the mutating webhook server. And then the webhook server would respond with the JSON patch to the API server. So what, so what the API server would update the manifest with. And then you have the deployment created with the necessary parameters. And the init container will download the agents and your metrics will now be pushed to to app dynamics. So the benefit of this is that you have one source of truth for your app dynamics configuration values. Um, you remove that responsibility from developers and you can get 100% observability on your Kubernetes cluster where the webhook is deployed. So let's go through the webhook architecture. So how it's designed is you have your webhook deployment namespace. So that's where you actually deploy the webhook server. And then you have the application deployment namespace where your applications are deployed. And then you have the mutating webhook configuration. So that's your the Kubernetes configuration for your webhook. So how it defines how you want your webhook server to work. Um, so in the webhook deployment namespace, you have your agent version config map. So that just defines the, and this is specific to the app dynamics um, for this app dynamics solution. So this just defines the Java um, Java agents for your app dynamics, the image version. 
and the dotnet image so if you want to make changes for all your applications you're just going to come to your agent version config map and then change the version id for your agents um, then you have the java options config maps so that's just required by spring boot applications to so just specifying some from the options to start your spring boots um, applications with and then you have the app dynamics controller details so that's where you specify your controller ip and some other values that you might want to tweak um, then you have the webhook server certificate, which contains the certificate that the server, the webhook server is going to use to communicate with the API server. So just to ensure that it's a secure communication, then you have the webhook service and the deployment itself. So it's in that deployment that um, that deployment is the server which does the patching, which creates the patch for your application. Then you have your mutating webhook configuration. So as mentioned, that's how, where you specify how you want your webhook to work. Um, so we'll go through that. And then your webhook client certificate. So the webhook client certificate is just the certificate bundle for your server. And then you have in your application deployment namespace, you have the app dynamics secret. So that's what you'd use to authenticate to app dynamics to push the metrics and your .NET agent config. So just some, some configurations for .NET applications. So the way it works is you run your kubectl apply or your kubectl create command, and then your API server sends the request to your webhook configuration so that web configuration now sends the request to your webhook service so which is usually on which will be on slash mutate for mutating webhooks um, so it sends the request to the webhook service the webhook service will send the request to the deploy to the server and then the server checks to see if the label is there and what it should do for this application. So if it sees that it should install um, the app dynamics agent it creates the patch depending on what type of application it is. So if it's a Java application, if it's a .NET application, it creates the patch depending on that. And then it sends that response back to the API server. The API server will now take that patch and updates your manifest and then creates the deployment on the cluster. And then just um, in that application deployment namespace, you also have a label where you have to specify that you want the webhook to actually work in this particular namespace. So it depends on if you want, if you have some namespaces that you don't want the applications to be on App Dynamics or it's not a requirement, then you can leave that, then you can leave those namespaces without um, the label. So your updated resource will now be persisted in your etcd um, server so instead of having just what you have let's say in your repository as your manifest you would see that your manifest will actually be updated with extra parameters let's take a deeper dive into the webhook server so we'll go through the webhook the webhook configuration so the mutating webhook configuration which is a kubernetes object um, so here we're just specifying the api group which this web Hook should affect and the resources under that API group. So we're saying the apps API group and the resource that should be affected are the deployments. Um, so here you can specify deployments, you can specify pods. Um, and then we're also saying the operations that should be that should be carried out on those um, on those resources that will trigger this webhook. So it should be when a deployment is being created or updated. We're also specifying the namespace selector, which would say um, any namespace that has this label app dynamics webhook uh, app dynamics webhook enabled should have this webhook um, triggered so anytime a deployment is being created in that namespace then this webhook should be triggered then we're also specifying the service the webhook service and then would we'll add the certificate bundle so here we are now going into the actual code then we have we're importing the requirements, the Python or the Python libraries, the required Python libraries, and then we are setting up login for the application. So this just tells us this particular application maybe failed or this particular application was successful. Then we're also setting the path where the webhook should call the API server on. So I say you should call it on slash mutate. Then here we are specifying some variables just to make it um, just to make it easier to uh, should I say to work for every application and then here is where the important part is so we're getting the 
request that was gotten from the API server and then we're passing it for a few parameters. So we want the metadata, we want the spec, we want the containers within the spec, and then we also want the spec within the spec for deployments. So we're just trying to get all the details and then also check if this application has the app dynamics, um, the label for the agent to be installed. So if you find that label, that's when the webhook is going to make a change to it. But if we have a situation where that label is not added and we haven't implemented to say the label must be added, then what will happen is that it will just return the manifest as, as is. So it won't make any changes to the application. So here we're getting the annotations and we are getting the programming language, the install app dynamics agent option. And then once we get all of that, then we make our then the webhook sorry will make its decision on if it's going to patch the application or not. Um, so we also set some error messages which would tell um, the user or the engineer if their let's say the annotation wasn't added correctly. Um, so here we have like the patch that the API server, that the webhook is going to send back to the API server. So it sends it, you know, and allowed, um, allowed is true. That if it is allowed, if you've not set any deny, deny um, requirements or anything like that. So we send the patch, which is saying, for example, let's just pick the first one that says um, operation add, add to this path, spec template, spec containers, the first container and the first environment, sorry, the environment variable. So append this environment variable to that path. So minus one means append, zero means that should be the first. So that's how it's going to add the app dynamics. So a few parameters for the app dynamics um, controller to use and also some volume. So these are just a few, but you have your volumes, you have your um, in its container and some commands also. So that brings us to the end of my talk. Um, I hope it was informative and you're able to learn a bit about how mutating webhooks work and how you can use them to simplify tasks that are manual um, on your Kubernetes, for your Kubernetes applications. So here I've just um, added some references to the official documentation for dynamic con admission controllers and then also the kind of base of this project was from the IT Hollow Warden application and then also how to manage your certificates for your webhooks using set manager so to remove the need to constantly um, update certificates manually so thank you for attending this session and i hope you enjoy the rest of um, platform con <laughs>